order arrangement with you and I have just five simple ingredients. Golden rain tree. And I have some of the Pyrrhus japonica, foxtail lilies. I have some grass, some, this is the grocery store grass. <laughs> just from the um, little field beside the grocery store and um, a poinsettia from the grocery store. So all things that this is probably if you're um, going to go out there and practice an arrangement that's similar to this, this is probably going to be the thing that you might have a little bit of trouble finding, but you really don't need this specific type of thing. You just need something that's long and reaching and um, has a little bit of a bend to it. So I'll talk about the purpose of the ingredients. The purpose is really the most important part. You can substitute with anything that fills a similar purpose and recreate a similar look. Now in terms of mechanics for this arrangement, I'm working in, um, I don't know, I guess you would, this is what I like to call the sailboat shape. <laughs> but um, if you can come around here and just get a close up of how we have this set up, um, a lot of times I talk about wire, um, wire foams, wire foam and frogs and tape. There's lots of different ways to put together the mechanics for your arrangement. And I like to choose those things based on the ingredients that I'm putting in the arrangement, not just what my preference is, because I think sometimes people get locked into like, well, I only use frogs or I only use foam or, you know, those kinds of things, but not all flowers perform really great in, in, foam, but some flowers really need that really strong, stable thing. This container doesn't allow me to have a frog in here, at least not the shape. I have just have the round ones in the studio right now. So, and, and just the way that it's shaped, it's difficult to really secure a frog in there really well. So I thought through, okay, well, how's the end of the design going to look? What are the components for mechanics that I can use to put together so that every flower's need is taken care of? So usually my um, technique for mechanics is a little bit simpler than this, but for this arrangement in particular, I think it's important to have these different components. So I'm gonna fill this up too tall so I could tip and show, but you'll see I have a layer of um, chicken wire in here deep inside the bowl and then I have a little piece of foam over here on the right hand side my right hand side and then I have some a tape grid over top of that so this foam is important for the foxtail lily which is really heavy and has a very thick stem the chicken wire we can easily handle the purists can go in that and um, this grass, I didn't put the foam to the edges on both sides because I need a little bit of room for the grass to go right into that chicken wire. So just wanted to share that with you as you're thinking through arrangements that you could be making. There are all kinds of, you know, you can configure these in any type of way to meet the needs of the flowers, the ingredients, the end place that it's going to really serve your client best and meet their needs. And this one's just going in the house so I'm not, um, you know, concerned about water sloshing in the car or, or anything like that. And if I was, I would just tip out water and refill whenever I got to my destination. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to begin with the Pyrrhus as the base in my creation here today. And... Right now we're establishing the shape and the size of the arrangement. And this ingredient, while um, I am gonna use the foxtail and the grasses are gonna play kind of an important role in shape and size as well. Um, this is really that, that low piece that the other flowers can be supported by. But it's also a pretty important shape component as well. So rather than just only using it to kind of cover down here in the rims, it really is going to be a pretty prominent, I see it being a pretty prominent piece. So before I got started, I surveyed all the the ingredients that I had and I kind of thought in my mind like how would I like to go about arranging them what are their strengths 
how can I showcase them the best? And with the Pyrrhus, I really love the idea of it kind of being dominant on one side, a little bit heavier on one side, but still having a little touch of it over here because I imagine these foxtail lilies shooting up in this area. So that's gonna add some visual weight and balance it out over there. So this is what we're looking at over here right now. And I'm designing this, I think if I have um, extra ingredients, I might go back in and finish out the back side. But I'm imagining this arrangement with what I have available to me just being one-sided and being placed um, up against a wall and showcased in that light. So it's sort of a silhouetted end use is what I have in mind. Where we're really focusing on the lines that are being created up here. Not as important that we have a finished back in this case. Right, so there's the main shape and silhouette that I have going with the Pyrrhus, and I'm gonna add some of the grasses, the grocery store grasses next. I want those to shoot up and flow out over to the right side. And these aren't something that necessarily need lots and wa lots of water right now they're already pretty dry so what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a, a measure here and then I'm going to bind them together so that they stay hanging out as a club whenever they get mixed in here with the rest of the flowers and if the position isn't quite right and we need to pull the binding apart, that's no big, no biggie. But that's what I think will perform the best. But you don't know until you get going. Every arrangement's different, every flower group is different. together now they're all kind of one stem as opposed to being many that makes it easy to get it situated in here Drama, drama, grass drama, pretty fun. So these foxtail lilies I saw as being the, really the backbone of this arrangement. So I'm gonna add those next, nice and tall and reaching that uppermost point. And I thought it would be a fun contrast with these really light Grasses, the grasses really give us quite a drama moment too. But these are, these add that touch of stability. And they have so much personality with their little curves. This 
this tall one if I just only use the tall one I had this I have a thing I don't like naked stems <laughs> very much sometimes they're fine um, but for this I like to I'm kind of using the two pieces to work together to keep the flower buds going the whole way down into that base and I think I'm gonna stop with those for now there could be there could be another one. Just depends what what suits you. Gives it a heavier look. See, whenever they're here at this like same angle, they look like little, they look like little, yeah, we're gonna adjust that a little bit. I don't know what littles they look like, but we just need to adjust the height of them so they don't, don't look like, we'll call them ears. Get rid of the ears. Okay, so that gives us a, you know, a little stair step. And the last ingredient, well, we have two more. I've got the rain tree yet. And this I thought would be just pretty coming down and spilling out along with the pierish little accent for that. And since these don't need to be in water at all, you can use the pieris to tuck them in. Since some of them have shorter stems, you can tuck them in and support them in and among the pieris. You'll see I do have like there is lots of open space in here the mechanics are totally visible right now that's something that we'll address but whenever you're doing something that is a little bit more sculptural you need the negative space deep down inside here so if you start filling that up too quick too fast then you really lose the interesting you know silhouette of the foxtail lily and things like that so under here this is an opportunity where some just some light layering of moss can go in um, trochelium things like that that are very flat and in this case, I'm probably going to do maybe a little bit with the poinsettia, just a leaf kind of over top of the mechanics. Very, very subtle. So it's around Christmas time up here in the mountains. So the grocery stores, the poinsettias are out and... in the masses right now. I'm 
love to get this poinsettia right in the water, directly in the water. Poinsettia does um, have the white sap. And so whenever that bleeds out, it will bleed out and will form a little scab. It will eventually stop, um, the sap will eventually stop coming out of the plant. So it's important when you create an arrangement like this with a flower that has that. Um, some people recommend, you know, clipping it, putting in water, letting it all, um, letting it all run out and then switching it into a new bucket. So they say, you know, cut them at the length that you would want when you go in the arrangement. Well, sometimes when you're making the arrangement, you're not quite sure how long you need it to be. So when you're planning, you can clip and, you know, let it sit in a little vase beside you and kind of test it out and then let it drain out and put it back in. Or what I'm gonna do today is just, I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna let it drain and I'm going to flush the water. Just want to keep the water clean. But all of these plants are, you know, they're being clipped and they're, you know, taking that first drink. So if you did do that, I'd recommend adding this one in a little bit later after they've already had a chance to get some of their their water up. But I could also just clip and pop them in my little little vase here as well. So that is up to you. You do some experiments and see if see what kind of difference it makes. So we're just adding those poinsettias in there. I think I really could have stopped before, but these are that nice little, it's the little focal point. And by little, I mean big, focal points are big. But I think with this, with the emphasis that we had on the, the shape and the way that the lilies came up and out, I think it could have easily been done before. So we're at that matter of preference point. It's all a matter of preference, actually, but the principles are what help guide us. So we can interpret them a lot of different ways. So my dominant principle before I added the focal point could have just been the line of the, uh, of the foxtail lily. Works both ways, so. All right, so that's what I that's what I've landed with and where I'm gonna hang out and quit. But I am gonna just go back over with some of the poinsettia and the rain tree and just do some low coverage in here uh, at the bottom to cover mechanics. But that's all. Nothing really interesting to see see there with that. So. Here you have it with the poinsettia, and I will pop these out so you can see and get a visual again if, if the line was going to be the dominant principle, how that would change the overall composition.